What's the benefit of paleo? Incentive 2013, number four on the carbon cycle. Matter continuously cycles through an ecosystem. A simplified carbon cycle is depicted below. So here we see carbon dioxide going through step one, um, which generates our organic molecules, and then it goes through step two, which is going to allow us to then have that carbon dioxide again. So part A says to identify a key metabolic process for step one and a key metabolic process for step two. So I think to myself, OK, what process starts with carbon dioxide and ends in some type of organic molecule like uh, glucose? Well, that's just photosynthesis. And then I think to myself, what part uses organic molecules like glucose, breaks them down and gets carbon dioxide out? Oh, cellular respiration. And so you could have been a bit more specific and talked about the Calvin cycle, because if you remember, carbon dioxide gets fixed during the carbon cycle. It's going to come in um, and it's going to bind to RUBP using the enzyme Rubisco. And then through the process of the Calvin cycle, we're going to synthesize G3P, which can be put together with another G3P, which makes glucose. Um, and then in terms of breaking down those organic molecules, if you remember the citric acid cycle or the Krebs cycle um, is where the pyruvate, um, actually the acetyl CoA, comes in as our two carbon uh, structure. And then we're going to see that it's broken down and releases two carbon dioxide molecules with one turn of that Krebs cycle. Um, and so you're going to see the organic molecules then becomes carbon dioxide. So then we have to br briefly explain how each process promotes movement of carbon through the cycle. For this process, your explanation should focus on the role of energy in the movement of carbon. So in photosynthesis, um, the carbon dioxide is going to um, use the energy from the solar radiation. OK, and so um, in the light reactions, we have these photosystems. The photosystems have a bunch of pigments on them. They capture the light energy and they store that energy in the form of um, ATP as well as high energy electrons in energy. NADPH. The ATP and the NADPH are then going to go over to the Calvin cycle and they are going to drop off that energy. Um, the carbon oxide will get fixed, which will then synthesize the G3P or those organic molecules that we mentioned before. So the appropriate response here is that carbon oxide gets fixed. Um, it uses light energy or the ATP from the reactions and the output is going to be those organic molecules. Students said step one is photosynthesis. During photosynthesis, the energy of the sun is used to excite electrons. The movement of these electrons releases energy, which is utilized to convert carbon dioxide into G, I'm sorry, C6, H12O6, glucose, and other organic molecules, which store the energy. In this way, C is moved from carbon dioxide to organic molecules. So then we also have to explain step two. So the organic molecules, in terms of cellular respiration, we see that we're going to break down the organic molecules and we're going to release that potential energy that's stored in them. That energy is released in the form of high energy electrons that are uh, carried by NADH and FADH2 to the um, electron transport chain, which generates a proton gradient. That proton gradient is then used to synthesize ATP um, as it moves down its concentration gradient through uh, ATP synthase um, following the process of chemiosmosis. Uh, and that and then converts us back into the carbon dioxide. Um, and so we release out the carbon dioxide when we break down those molecules. Um, so what we're looking at here is organic molecules are hydrolyzed, broken down. Um, we use the energy of these different processes to synthesize ATP. And then we have a carbon output. And of course, I'm giving way more information because I'm trying to make sure that you're understanding these phases. <laughs> uh, step two is cellular respiration, in which organic molecules, glucose, are broken down to release energy, which is used to form ATP. Carbon dioxide is a waste product released as a result of the breakdown of C6H12O6. In this way, C moves from C6H12O6 to CO2 again. So part B says to identify an organism that carries out both processes. So my brain immediately goes to what is something that has both a mitochondria and a chloroplast. And so I know that a plant is one of those things that has that. Um, so there's multiple other answers that were appropriate. Um, you could have talked about algae. You could have talked about photosynthetic uh, protists. You've talked about cyanobacteria because um, they use their plasma membrane in order to do a lot of these different processes in terms of that uh, concentration gradients. Um, you could also talk about carbon dioxide fixing bacterium, or you could talk about lichen. The student said a plant, such as a pine tree, exhibits both processes described above. Hope that was helpful. Remember, 8 bad penguins just says by y'all.